dear brothers, my dear sisters, on this blessed day of Al Jumu'ah, I ask Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to bless each and every single one of us, and that He Subhanahu wa Ta'ala has His mercy upon us, and that He allows our last speech to be La ilaha illallah. The great companion Hudayfa ibn al Yaman radiallahu an is a very special companion. In fact, all of the companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam are special and have their own special gifts and relationships with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. However, Hudayfa radiallahu an is special for, for what? He was the individual whom the Prophet alayhi sallallahu wasallam would share the secrets. Disclose information to Hudayfa radiallahu an in which no other would receive that information, that special information. In fact, many of the ahadith, many of the narrations that deal with alamatu sa'a, or the signs of the day of judgment, or events and trials and fitin, or matters that would happen towards the end of time were relayed by Hudayfa ibn al Yaman radiallahu anhu. And I want to mention a particular incident that happened between Hudayfa radiallahu anhu, the great companion of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and an individual whose name was Silah from the Tabi'een so Hudayfa radiallahu anhu's hadith is found in Sunan ibn Majah and it is an authentic sound narration in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said يدرس الإسلام كما يدرس وشي الثوب that Islam will become worn out just as the clothes they are worn out. Hatta until when? Hatta la yadri masiyamu wala sadaqa wala nusuk. Until time will come that people will not know what fasting is, not charity or the pilgrimage, and that the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they will be taken up in one night. وَيَبْقَى طَوَائِفٌ مِّنَ النَّاسِ And that there will remain some people. الشَّيْخُ الْكَبِيرُ وَالْعَجُوزَ الْكَبِيرَ That the older generation, these will remain. Not meaning that these are the only people that will remain. But these are the only people that will remain who will have some understanding. What will their understanding be? يَقُولُونَ meaning that the older generation, that they will say, أَدْرَكَنَا أَبَاءَنَا that we remember our forefathers عَلَى هَذِهِ الْكَلِمَةِ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَنَحْنُ نَقُولُهَا we remember our forefathers, the generations that came before us and we remember, we remember they used to say لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ so the one who is hearing this, Sila, he says to Hudayfa رضي الله عنه they say لا إله إلا الله How will la ilaha illallah benefit them وهم لا يدرون ما الصيام ولا صدقة ولا نسك They have no idea of what fasting is, what charity is and what pilgrimage is What is the benefit of them saying la ilaha illallah He said this three times On the first two occasions Hudayfa radiallahu anhu ignores him Doesn't say anything to him Then on the third time after being, on the third occasion he has asked, Hudayfa radiallahu anhu, he turns to him and says, Ya Sila, tunjihim minan nar. That this kalima of la ilaha illallah that they are saying will save them from the hellfire. This is in a time where it is clear when we, if you look at the hadith in more depth, that knowledge is taken away from the people. But what remains with those individuals, those people, and of course it is all, if you like, relative to their time. That's all they had. But all they had, they held on to. If we look at ourselves now, when we compare ourselves, and this is in the latter, later times, Akhir Zaman, and you know when you pick up a book, or a very famous book by Ibn Kathir rahimahullah talking about the signs of the day of judgment Ibn Kathir rahimahullah would talk about a great alim who lived what 750 years ago 800 years ago people were thinking signs of the day of judgment akhir zaman 
the end of times. They were thinking it's far away. When people read the same things, Akhir Zaman, they think, you know, the end of times, thinking it's far away. Centuries have passed, and we are centuries closer to Akhir Zaman. With our life as it stands at the moment, changing on a daily basis, the world is a different place now. Towards the end of time, people will only know La ilaha illallah, but they will hold on to it. Because they don't have anything else. And relative to them, that's absolutely everything. But if we look at ourselves now, the access to knowledge, your devices, masajid, you are in a great blessing. So in relative terms, who is in a better position? Yes, they may have less. But what they have less of, they hold on to everything. And now for us, at the very least, is it not enough for us? Or is it not upon us to actually know the meaning of La ilaha illallah? Not something we inherited from our forefathers and that we have access to understandings, what it actually means, what it means to be a Muslim, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us guidance to preserve your Islam, to preserve, preserve your identity as a Muslim. But there are so many things which will edge away at that if you're not careful. This worldly life, the many celebrations that are pushed and given to you, and you isolate one celebration, it doesn't really matter. The celebration of the New Year's, or the Christmas, or the Valentine's, or the Mother's Day, this day and that day if you isolate one of them maybe it's not such a big problem but it's the principle that what guidance did Allah Taala give to you to preserve your deen hifud al-deen one of the objectives of Islam is to protect itself and anything that may take anything away from that should be then put to one side it is not there to restrict your life it is there to preserve your life so how important it is for us to understand the reality and we're talking about the foundation of our deen the very basics of our religion and at times it is important for us to go back to the very building blocks of our deen to understand what it means to say la ilaha illallah that when Allah ta'ala tells us in the deen in the islam that the deen accepted only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-Islam and what is al-Islam is to surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what kalima? La ilaha illallah This is the key This is the foundation of everything And for us to be ignorant of that is the biggest calamity any individual can face on earth Not loss of money Not loss of health But the misunderstanding concerning their own religion Islam, having a misunderstanding of how do you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. So the theory of what I've just said to you, you agree with. Very important. Yes, mashaAllah, good. A good word on the mimbar. Something that was mentioned on the day of Jumu'ah was a good word. However, this is part of the ilm. This is part of the knowledge that is given to you from the Qur'an and the Sunnah. But it doesn't stop there and should never stop there. Because ilm, acquiring the knowledge is half of the job. The next half of the job is you implementing it and allowing that knowledge to become part of your identity. So what is the amal now? What is the action now? There's no need to refer you to the books of the great ulama, although important. Something very simple for you to refer to. Something every single one of us have memorized. Something all of us, from the smallest of children, from the age of three and four and five, we teach them. Teach them and know the ma'ani, the meanings of what? Surah Al-Fatiha. Because within Surah Al-Fatiha, Umm Al-Quran, the mother of the chapters of the Quran, 
the message of the entire Quran you can find in Surah Al-Fatiha. The meanings of La ilaha illallah are there in Surah Al-Fatiha. So this is the amal. For us to go back to Surah Al-Fatiha, to understand Surah Al-Fatiha, and how that will increase my knowledge in La ilaha illallah. So if you're asked, La ilaha illallah, what does it mean to you? Maybe you'll give a meaning of its ma'ana, of its meaning. You know, what, its intended meaning. There is no one deserving of, or worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the translated meanings. Okay. But when you read Surah Al-Fatiha, is there, is there something more than that? When you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise, thanks, it belongs to and is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbul Alameen. The Lord of the worlds. So Allah Jalla wa ala is a Rabb. What is a Rabb? The creator, the sustainer, the owner, the controller of all of the affairs in the universe. So when you say Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, your affirmation of La ilaha illallah, part of that is to affirm Allah's lordship, that he created everything. That he subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control of the universe. Nothing happens except by his permission. And that he subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of everything. And sustains everything. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. The most merciful, the most beneficent. That to, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, walillahi al-asma'ul husna. That to, to Allah jalla wa ala belongs the most beautiful names and attributes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's all-encompassing mercy to all of the universe. Those who believe, those who disbelieve. Ar-Rahim, that special mercy that is given only to the believers. Another aspect of Allah's tawheed, of la ilaha illallah, his names and attributes. Maliki yawmiddin, or Maliki yawmiddin, the owner, the king of the day of judgment. All accountability goes back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iyyaka na'abudu wa iyyaka nasta'een. You alone we worship, you alone we seek aid. The essence of La ilaha illallah. The same message that was taught from Adam alayhi salam to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam to worship only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to avoid all partners, intermediaries from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah jalla wa ala to guide us to a true understanding of La ilaha illallah.